Welcome to the spooky finale in this Castlevania Marathon. Uh, I've taken a look at all three games in the NES Trilogy over the course of October, and today I'll be finishing the classic series with the fourth and final classic Castlevania. And yes, I know it's November 7th, it's not spooky season anymore, but that's not going to stop me from finishing this. Last week I took a look at Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. It went back to the Castlevania level by level format, but also adding in multiple new mechanics like three playable characters, branching paths, it was sort of non-linear. It was a fantastic game that pushed the NES's limits to the max and was a great ending to the NES trilogy. After the third game's release, the Super Nintendo was just a year away from launch, and almost every NES franchise wanted to make the leap into the next gen of consoles. So most franchises got what I like to call the Super Treatment. Mario got Super Mario World, Metroid got Super Metroid, Punch-Out got Super Punch-Out... You get the idea. With the Super Nintendo being a much more powerful system, these franchises got a massive upgrade with better graphics, sounds, controls, and overall just bigger games. Of course, every popular franchise wanted to take advantage of this, and what better franchise to do that than Castlevania? Super Castlevania 4 was released on December 4th, 1991. It still stuck with Castlevania's linear level format, but added the addition of whipping in 8 directions and the ability to control yourself mid-air. It sort of acts as a remake of the first game straying away from the Castlevania 3's design and removing the branching paths and the multiple playable characters. I guess they want to stick to the simpler format of Castlevania. Simon Belmont going from level to level, whipping ghouls and fighting monsters. So let's take a look at the Castlevania that got the super treatment, Super Castlevania 4. Alright, so apparently every 100 years the power of Dracula grows stronger and starts to quote unquote revive itself. So I guess the story takes place 100 years after Simon defeats Dracula in the second one, according to this game. Once again, Dracula raises from his grave to unleash his evil power over Transylvania, and Simon Belmont is called to kill Dracula and restore peace in Transylvania. Like I said, it's sort of a remake slash reboot to the franchise, so the story isn't anything special. When you first start the game, you're greeted with a cutscene. The eerie music starts to play, the lightning strike cracks open the gravestone, and the fog starts to settle in. And that's when you know, this isn't your classic NES Castlevania anymore. No, this is Super Castlevania. The gameplay is what you'd expect from a Castlevania game. I know, it's getting repetitive. You go level by level, traveling to Dracula's castle, fighting monsters, and gathering orbs. The first thing to mention is the new controls. You can now control yourself mid-air whenever you jump, making platforming sections way easier than ever before. No more of that awkward stiff jumping in the previous games. Another feature they added is the ability to whip in 8 directions, making this game the most fluent and controllable Castlevania up until this point. Oh, and you can also do this. This is fun. The developers focused on making this game more controllable to make the overall experience less frustrating compared to the NES trilogy. In those games, most of the difficulty came from the platforming sections and the insane knockback. So by fixing these issues, the game feels more fair when it comes to the difficulty. You are in control, and so when you die, it feels like it's your fault rather than the game's fault. However, I will say that having this much control can make the game a little too easy at times. The first part of the game I kind of just blew by with little to no trouble. It wasn't until the later stages where the game actually got up to Castlevania standards of difficulty. I also found most enemies easy to handle. With the whip having so much range and the ability to whip in 8 directions, most enemies I didn't have a problem taking care of. One other thing that this hinders is the sub-weapons. You almost have too much control over your whip to the point where you don't even need the sub-weapons anymore. They're kind of just there. There wasn't really a situation that I couldn't handle with the whip. In the NES games, the level design and enemy placement were strategically planned and designed to use your sub-weapons tactically. But in this game, the whip is so big and strong that there's really no need to use your weapons, and the enemy placement seems lazy. Most of the time you can just whip the enemies above you because your whip is so long, and other times the enemies aren't even facing the right way. The level design can be lazy, but that's not to say the levels aren't enjoyable. Each level is different and has new mechanics and environments that really show off the capabilities of the Super Nintendo. Like the level that has a spinning background simulating a 3D environment, or the level that has the room that rotates around you. 
Not only were the levels impressive at the time, but the graphics were outstanding. Gone were the colorful cartoony graphics of the older games. Each level is dark and gothic. Every enemy seemed scarier. They definitely went for a darker and serious tone, but honestly, I prefer the colorful cartoony style. It makes the game less dull and pop out more. The soundtrack even has a more serious tone. They took advantage of the Senesta's capabilities and used more sound effects and music tracks that contributed to the game's atmosphere. Like the whip sounds like a whip. I guess that's the plus. The whole game is decently long, it took me about 3 hours to beat. Like I mentioned before, the first part of the game was pretty easy, so most of that 3 hours were in the final levels of the game. Like in every Castlevania, at the end of each stage there's a boss. In this game, they were okay. Each one had a unique style and a handful of attacks. The problem was, they were too easy. I found myself constantly just whipping and tanking through attacks to beat them. Again, they didn't start getting hard until the very last stages of the game. Now all this talk about the game being too easy could possibly be because I played each Castlevania game back to back, and I would argue that the third one was the hardest I've played. So that could be the case on why I think it's pretty easy. But anyways, after all the surprisingly easier levels, I finally made it to the final boss. And compared to the third game's final boss, this one is underwhelming. First of all, the boss only has two forms. His first form is just like the one in the first game, only he has a couple more attacks. His second form was easy and only took me one try to beat. All he does is strikes lightning in the same pattern, so you just simply dodge that pattern, and there you go. And just like that, I beat Super Castlevania 4. The biggest flaw of this game is it relies on the first one so much when it could have been so much more. The graphics, sound, and some of the gameplay is different, but if you analyze it more in depth, it starts becoming more obvious that it's just a remake of the first one. What they should have done is the same thing Mario did. Super Mario Bros. 3 was and still is one of the best games of all time, but Super Mario World managed to expand upon that and be a better game and took steps forward. What Super Castlevania did was took steps back and didn't expand upon or add anything really new to the table. They added more control in Simon's moveset, but ultimately that just made the game easier. Despite these flaws, I still enjoyed the game. It was one of the more casual playthroughs compared to the other ones but I still had fun playing it. If you're looking for a Castlevania to get into but don't like the sound or the difficulty of the older ones, I would suggest this one, but that's not to say it won't be a challenge. I want to thank all of you who have stuck with me all the way through this marathon. It's been fun and difficult playing through all these games, and it's truly one of the best classic franchises ever. If I had to pick a favorite out of the four, it would have to be Castlevania 3. It was fun, satisfying, and challenging. It's the one that brought the most to the table, and has the best soundtrack in my opinion. So, once again, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this marathon, or just this specific video, give it a like, follow me on Twitter, and who knows, maybe I'll continue this Castlevania marathon next October. But, until next time, thanks again, and we will see you guys later in the next video. Bye bye you <laughs>